Now, I don't suppose our cash-strapped councils will be tempted to turn to gambling to boost their funds, but it seems more and more people are getting into debt because technology is making betting easier. This week, the House of Lords will be considering the gambling bill. John Hess has met a Derbyshire man who's lost thousands of pounds using his mobile phone to place bets. Go on a minute, we all like a little flutter from time to time, whether it's the Grand National or the Weekly Lottery. But what happens when new technology like the mobile phone, interactive television or the internet can transform that flutter into an addiction? Online gambling on his mobile phone wrecked Adam Brown's marriage and plunged into serious debt this 24-year-old upholstery worker from Sandy Acre in Derbyshire. I started gambling on my phone um, it meant betting was more available to me any time of day. Didn't really matter where I was either. Um, if I was going out or something, I didn't have to panic and think, oh, I need to be back by this time or I need to get to the bookies for this time because I could just flick it on my phone and away I went. And how much has that cost you? Talking between fifteen to £20,000, I think. What you need is our new super-fast Paddy Power Messenger app. And have you tried live streaming yet? You'll love it. Live casino, Monopoly, Tomb Raider and over... The seductive ease of betting online has transformed the gambling industry. More of us are tempted, especially the computer-savvy young. If I was feeling a bit down or angry or upset or just kind of anything like that, that's when I kind of just turned to it as a release. There are an estimated half a million gambling addicts in Britain, yet only 15% of online betting sites come under UK law because they are based overseas. It's called remote gambling. Happier times, this is Adam's wedding day. He's now father to a young son. I'd lost a lot of money. I knew that I was going to be struggling, but for some reason it didn't seem to stop me. That's why there's political concern. Labour want new curbs on high street betting shops. The government's introducing new laws to regulate so-called remote gambling. If when I was gambling, for instance, someone had been ringing me up saying, um, we, we've noticed on your account in the last two hours you've put under a pound on, um, is everything OK? I think that would have probably embarrassed me enough to leave it for a little bit and thinking, oh, hold well on, these are actually watching what I'm doing. Do you feel as though you're out of that addiction zone now? There is always a chance that you can slip back into it, but I do, I do feel myself that I am more of a controlled gambler again than a compulsive gambler. Adam watches this week's parliamentary debate on gambling regulations. He hopes, for his sake and thousands of others, our lawmakers get it right. Well, we're joined now by Dr. Mark Griffiths from Nottingham Trent University, and he's a world expert on gambling. So, so Mark, we heard Adam's experiences there. Is this a common story? Uh, I wouldn't use the word common. I mean, we know there are about half a million adults in this country have a gambling problem. And obviously, those who have a gambling problem, they, they affect other people around them, typically two or three other people. So maybe two million people might be affected by problem gambling. But saying it's common, I don't, you know, the good news is it's under 1% of the population. OK, well, politicians say that they're definitely going to be addressing this problem with the gambling bill. Do you think it'll go far enough? Well, the thing about you know, the kind of legislators, they're always kind of two steps behind the technology anyway. I mean, we as researchers are always trying to catch up what the, the new issues are going to be. There seems to be a hell of a lot of debate around, for instance, fixed odds betting terminals in bookmakers. Yeah, I mean, if you've got a mobile phone or a tablet, you're essentially carrying around a bookmaker with you anyway. You know, you know bookmakers, I think, are being unfairly treated in the sense these are very highly regulated kind of um, environments. You're online. You know, we've got most of the British operators not even in operating in Britain because they want to obviously save on, on tax. And what we should be really doing is tightening up regulations and making basic gambling safer for people. So politicians like Mark could be doing more? Mark Spencer. Yeah, and I think so. I think what we need to be doing actually is encouraging the industry itself to, to do more regulation and, and look after its, its customers better. Just like the alcohol industry spends a lot of money educating uh, people who drink alcohol, I think the, the gambling industry should be doing more to educate its punters. And I think that's actually happening now. I mean, the Association of British Bookmakers, for instance, I recently developed their, well, helped develop their new code of conduct. And one of the things they're going to do on fixed odds betting terminals in bookmakers, they're going to give people the chance to, to actually set time and money limits. This is great. 
wait, you know, you're pre-committing, saying, I don't want to lose more than £20 on this machine over this 24 mm. hours. Those are the kind of things that the, the operators can actually do. They've got the technology. That's the thing. We worry about the technology that yeah. is now coming to our home and workplace, but we can actually harness this technology to actually help the people that, you know, that most need it. Well, Labour brought this, uh, their own gambling motion into the Commons uh, last week, aimed at curbing the growth of fixed yeah. odds betting machines. Um, but that was defeated, so you must be disappointed on that, surely. Yeah, we're disappointed about that. We want to see local councils have more powers to stop too many bookmakers and these machines clustering. We also want to see some things that would do exactly what Mark was talking about. Give people, a, you know, have these pop-ups which stop people. You can have a break from it. But I think the really important point actually is the technology, uh, IT is developing all the time and we are quite slow as legislators in keeping up to pace well, with does, that. Does, does, does Labour th regret relaxing the laws on gambling as you did because really I, I, you let it perhaps get out of control in the first place. Actually we put in the first ever limits on the numbers of these fixed or betting machines but we do need to keep up with the pace of change in technology. We've you seen this. Super casinos, we've though, seen didn't you? this with I the big. We've seen this with all sorts of things, whether it's rows about what's said on Twitter, whether it's gambling. The internet is developing very quickly, and it would be good to know from Mark, you know, what's the next thing we should be thinking about now, so that we can plan ahead and well, get ahead is, of if, the game. If any of us have got kids, all their life is going online now. I mean, I've got three screen ages. They spend a disproportionate amount of time, you know, every day. And what we're seeing is a convergence between social gaming, video gaming, gambling. Basically, people want to monetize the things that people are doing for free. I, I actually see we'll have video games where people start gambling within the games. We're going to see a lot more gambling on Facebook and other uh, social networking sites. And parents have to get a lot more educated and clued up about what their kids are actually doing. Because, you know, my kids are the gamblers of tomorrow. So, so if you say that, what, what can what politicians do? really do? Well, the thing is... We, they're, they're up against it, yeah, really, exactly. they, with there the new are, technology. I think anything where, you know, what we've seen with gambling, of course, we used to have dedicated gambling environments. Then it spread to things like buying you know, lottery tickets in petrol stations you know now we've got single site slot machines all over the place and of course now what remote gambling brings us is it takes out gambling into the you know it takes, she takes it into the home and into the workplace and that does mean the politicians yeah. jobs get harder well is there any point trying to well, control no, it then there Mark? is i think what we've got, to, we've got to try and encourage the industry to help us out here because i think obviously if you're in a bookmakers you've got someone behind the counter who can say Come on, Jim, you, I don't think don't. you've lost enough. Uh, that's difficult, but of course you can always go home and deal with somebody in the Cayman Islands who's running a gambling site, uh, and that's where the real challenge is going to come, in international, uh, you know, there, there are borders which can be crossed. But can, can you do crossed. anything on that? Well, we've got to get the industry to step up to the plate and take responsibility mm. and act more responsible. But I, you know, and, and I would actually say to you, Mark, that is actually happening. Good. You know, you look at some of the major players in this country, and they are taking this er issue seriously now. And of course, with technology, particularly if you're using a smart card or online, we can track every single bet but that can a gambler really does. Take on I, these I think, offshore companies? I think there's, there's two things that we need to do here. Part of actually the government's legislation that's coming forward, and we've supported this, we've, we're trying to make improvements to it, is saying you know there should be a proper regulatory framework, even if you're based abroad, if people are playing it here. Secondly, I think we do need to educate our young mm, people absolutely. about what's coming up so they're prepared for the future, and parents too. I mean, nobody here is against people having a bet, but I think we've got to have a system where if you start to see this problem gambling happening, people can take a break out of it. You know, there's a there's a pause there, so that you know, I think that's a really important thing that we've been trying to get. Did you mean and, to call your I, teenagers screen agers? No, by no, the way? no. I deliberately <laughs> call my. You know, this is what we. You know, they're in the academic terms are called digital natives. I call them screen agers because oh, right. you know these are people that have never known a world without interactive television, without mobile phones, without the internet, and they are the adults of tomorrow. So, as a parent who, who studies studies yeah. this for his job, he's been studying yeah. gambling for 25 years. Yeah. You must be very worried then about the future for no, them, because, are you? No, because I'm somebody, I'm a responsible parent. You know, when my children watch gambling type shows on television, I can say to them, yes, you've seen somebody win, but of course there are always more people losing. What you've got, of course, is that this might be happening in homes and parents aren't saying anything to their kids. For me, gambling is just so like... you're saying we've got to get more involved as parents too? For me, gambling is off the radar. You know, kids have sex yeah. education, tobacco education, alcohol education. Yeah. I'm saying we should have education about gambling. And even now, okay. things like Chris, video gaming yeah. as well, yeah. we have so to... You know. Dr. Mark Griffiths, thank you very much indeed for coming into the studio.